Welcome to my favorite part of my house. This is my she shed. This is my cozy corner. This is where I hang out all the time and look out at my beautiful garden. But here's what I don't like about it. I love my little planter. I love having something to put my feet up on. By the way, this is broken. <laughs> and I also have a table here. It's all these like little things. Maybe you guys don't care about stuff like that, but it really, really bothers me. <laughs> so in order to clean up this area a little bit, I thought I could combine these two things into one. We're going to make a planter table. Is there a reason that this is not going to work? Let's find out. So we're going to build this big pot with the coiling technique. This is a great hand building technique if you don't know how or you don't have access to a wheel. And in order to make our pot consistent, I like to use a template. And I decided to go for this ball shape, kind of Sputnik inspired planter. Once my template is finished, I'm going to start making the base. So I just rolled out a one centimeter thick slab here and I am cutting it down to the proper width. This is really important to start with the right measurements because otherwise, if I follow the curve of the template, it might get too wide for my kiln. And then to make my coils, I'm using my extruder. Of course, if you don't have access to an extruder, you can always just roll out your coils like normal, um, but I very much like to use my extruder to kind of speed up the whole process. For attaching my coils, I typically just score one side. So I score the bottom here and then I don't use slip. I just push the coil down into it and blend it and it usually sticks just fine as long as the two pieces are still pretty wet. Throughout building up these walls, you will see me reference the template a lot. This is really important to get the right shape. So I'm referencing it as I add the coil on and then after each coil, I also pinch up the coil. So that basically gives me double the height from one coil. And so I want to make sure I'm pinching at the right angle to follow that shape. I blend a lot with my fingers, but I really like to use this yellow mud tools rib. A couple of you guys have asked, so I'm going to try to start linking the tools that I use in the description. I have a variety of mud tools ribs that I'm going to use throughout this project, but uh, for now I'm just using the yellow one. So as I'm building up the walls of my pot, I am actually adding just one coil at a time. So I'll add a coil and then I'll wait six hours or even overnight until that coil hardens up a little bit before I go ahead and add the next coil on top. You can definitely add coils faster than that if that's what is working with your clay. It really just depends on your clay, like the grog content in your clay, the humidity in your studio, all that kind of stuff. I don't mind working slowly in this way. I think that it helps me to get a really consistent shape and not get any slumping. With this project, I went through about 20 kilos of clay and I'm always extruding the whole 10 kilo bag at once to sort of speed up the process. I'm also going to be shaving off a lot of excess clay later on, so it's not going to end up being a 20 kilo pot. To store the coils in the meantime, I wrap them up in plastic. These coils are two and a half centimeters or one inch thick. They're thick coils so that I can pinch them. I'll pinch them to about half their original thickness and I'm gonna shave off some too. So in the end, my walls will end up being about one centimeter. Overnight, I'll definitely cover it with either plastic or some cloth just to slow down the process a little bit. But again, it depends on the, your clay and the humidity in your studio.
So as I'm getting to the end of my project, I wanted to start preparing the legs. So you'll see soon what I mean here by my Sputnik inspired shape. So for building the legs, I'm going to do, I guess, like a modified kurinuki, uh, which means you're carving away. I guess it's more like sculpting and hollowing. Anyway, I'm going to shape the leg just from a solid block of clay. And then later on, I'm going to go in and carve out the excess. Once I have the shape, I want them to slow dry so they dry evenly. If I just let them sit out like this, they would dry from the outside only and the inside would be quite wet still. So what I'm going to do is put a cloth over them so they dry out slowly for a couple of days. Once the legs have become more firm, I'm going to start shaping them to fit the pot. And then once again, I'm going to set them down and let them dry out a little bit more because the inside was still quite wet. Meanwhile, I'm going to finish closing the pot. I'm going to coil the pot completely closed because I'm actually going to flip the pot over. So this part is actually the bottom. Now that the pot is complete and my legs are dry enough, I'm going to start carving out the inside of the legs. I'm going for about one to two centimeters thickness on these. I'm going to try and make it as even as possible, but of course it's kind of a tricky shape to carve out. I'm trying to show you with my phone flashlight here that it's uh, hollow all the way down. And then once again, I'm going to wrap them up and let them dry out again, once again, to equalize the dryness again, because the inside was definitely more wet than the outside. I'm just trying to get it to dry evenly as possible. So to attach the legs, I'm going to score each side and then I'm making up some slip real quick to attach them. So because both of these sides are leather hard, I am going to use slip this time. I think that's pretty important. When you're using wet clay, you can get away with just scoring or just scoring and some water. But with leather hard, I definitely recommend slip. And then I didn't want to make an airlock inside of my legs, so I poked out these little holes. You're going to see later that I'm going to regret this. Okay, so I did have a couple of audio issues throughout the entirety of this project. So this whole day is without audio and we're just going to have to sit back and enjoy the silence. 
I'm using another Mud Tools rib here. This is uh, the scraper, I think, or what's it called? But here I'm just removing all of the excess clay. This is going to remove all of the little bumps. And the trick here is to go in one direction with the scraper and then go in the opposite direction. And that's going to smooth it out. And then later on, I'm going to go back in with a Mud Tools rib. This time I'm using the blue rib and the red rib to smooth out those scratching lines. This is the first time I actually flipped it over, so I was really worried. And it looks like it stands. Now you can see why I decided to flip it over and use the top as the bottom, because this part is going to be cut off. Of course, I want all of my planters to have some lovely drainage holes. And I'm not making a dish for this pot, but I was figuring I could just put a bowl underneath it each time I water it. I didn't think that this planter needed a specific dish. I can just put a little bowl under it when I'm watering the plant. And then now the pot is done, so I just need to let it dry out for a little while. A couple of days into drying, I started to get a bad feeling about my measurements. You can see here that I was really careful with the width. It's as wide as it could possibly be without actually touching the elements or the thermocouple, but apparently I measured the height wrong. After a short panic, I realized that the pot was still wet enough to cut into. If I had waited a day longer, I probably wouldn't have been able to cut into it anymore. So after a lot of thinking, I decided to shorten the legs instead of the top because I really wanted to keep that rounded shape. So it's only three centimeters too tall, so I'm just cutting off four centimeters to be on the safe side. And then what happened, you can see, is that my legs are already hollow at this point. So that's not ideal because I have those little holes on the inside. But I was thinking about it and I think that I would rather fill the inside holes and leave these hollow. I'm not sure what I was thinking because water and soil will get down into the legs. So luckily it was still leather hard enough that I could fill those holes. So I just added a little bit of water and made these little plug things and stuck them inside. It doesn't matter so much how they look just because it's going to be covered up with soil and the other side is inside of the leg, but I did want it to seal off the water and not let any soil or anything get inside the legs. One last test to see if it fits. And it fits, thank goodness. And now that I know it fits, I'm just going to let it dry. I'm going to give this pot at least two weeks to dry because it's big and it's thick and I wanna make sure it's fully dry. I don't want any cracks in that kiln. She survived the kiln in one piece. <laughs> we do have a couple of cracks at the bottom can see here and then the bottom of one of the legs there's a little crack but I don't mind because the piece is for me so there's no client <laughs> and you won't see them at all because they're going to be at the bottom so it's time to make a lid for this guy and 
while I could have done this out of clay, I thought it would be nicer to do it out of wood. And the reason for that is I was thinking about setting down cups and whatever down on my little table and setting something on a ceramic surface is not usually so nice. It's kind of like clanky. And I thought it would be nice just looking in general because it would be like a mixed media kind of thing. So I have this wood that fits. <laughs> so this is like, I think from an old shelf or something. Honestly, I don't remember, but um, it's real wood. It's just, yeah, whatever. Now I just need to figure out how to do this. So I decided this plant would live inside here. He needs a new pot desperately, my rubber plant. And yeah, I think that that would look really nice. <laughs> Hello. Okay, there's a few different ideas that I had for this. One was making it in two pieces and have them kind of slot into each other so that they could take some weight. But I think I'm just gonna go for the simpler solution, which is just to cut a channel for the stem. So I can remove the lid, uh, you know, to water the plant and stuff. But what I really want to do is, I really want it to rest inside, you know, so it's not gonna like shift around, right? So before cutting this out, I think I'm going to attach some pieces on the inside and then cut this out last. So I know that it has a nice uh, even overhang. Guys, I'm not a woodworker. <laughs> so this is very much flying by the seat of my pants. I'm gonna have some random scrap wood right here. So, I'm just gonna try and figure this out. So I made an outline and then I made a little mark on the pot. I don't know if you can see where it's going to match up because the pot is definitely not completely even. So I just have, can you see? I just have like an outline and then I'm gonna trace on the inside to leave maybe a centimeter or so for the lip, the width of the lip. So you see now I've got a circle inside of a circle and then these are going to be placed inside of that. So now we actually have to cut out the inner circle so we can use this as a template. This is gonna make sense in a second. Okay, now I have the inside and yeah, basically fits inside of my pot, good enough. I can always sand this stuff down later or, you know, file it down, whatever I need. So now what I'm going to do, okay, I forgot to press the on button there, but what we did was we traced the curve of the inside of the pot onto our wood. Okay, and we're gonna cut this part off so it will sit inside of our wood. It'll sit inside of our pot, right? <laughs> You see, it's gonna match up. And then I just numbered them one, two, three, because the pot is not even. Safety first. I'm gonna use this jigsaw. If you have the patience and you don't have a jigsaw, you can also just file off this round as you need, but um, I'm gonna go for the jigsaw. Okay, so I have my little um, corner pieces and they're still a little rough, so I'm gonna need to file them. So I'm just gonna file them and sand them so they're nice and smooth, yeah. Doesn't make sense how this is working. So this is going to slot inside of the pot. I 
I thought I could just glue these, but I actually ended up having problems because my clamps were not long enough. <laughs> you can see here, it's just reaching the corner of one of the flanges and yeah. So I did in the end have to add some screws. A little trick here to not getting your wood to split is to drill some pilot holes. In this first one, I did still have some splitting because I drilled too close to the edge. So it was easier to split at that edge. So as a precaution, I just use my clamp to kind of keep it together. <laughs> I'm not sure that this is the brightest idea, but um, it worked. Okay, moment of truth. Oh, it's a little bit tight. Okay, wait, can I wiggle it? No. Ah, shiza. Just kidding, I just found a way where it does fit. So it wasn't the planned orientation, but that's fine. I'm gonna mark that as. Now we just need to cut this into the shape we want it. Easy. Look at this, I lost the audio again. Awesome. If anyone out there wants to give me some advice about filming equipment and audio, I am not very good at technical things. Looks like I'm saying something very interesting here. I've got some skills, I don't have all the skills. Audio and video are not one of them. I'm using this little piece of wood to draw an overhang around the pot so it'll be nice and even. It's about a centimeter, so the lid will extend about a centimeter around the side of the pot. Okay, we have one last thing to do, which is add a channel for where the stem can go. So I'm going to start with this drill bit here that's going to cut a hole. I had, you see, I had to bring out the big drill here because it didn't fit inside my little guy. And then the jigsaw again. At one point I switched over to this really old and really dull hand saw because I couldn't get the plate of the jigsaw around the flanges. Later on I realized I could just flip it over and jigsaw from that side, so... Did I mention I'm not a woodworker? Well guys, here she is. I'm totally happy with how it turned out. I gotta say this is a project that I have been banging around in my head for a little while and it's so cool to finally see it come to life. So I have a question for you guys now and that is how should I treat this wood? I definitely don't want to just leave it raw like this so I could paint it. I was thinking like black would look kind of cool or I could stain it. Or, or maybe even a vibrant color to kind of contrast with the neutral tones. Let me know what you guys think. And if you enjoyed this video, I definitely want to recommend my other planter table. Believe it or not, this is the second planter table that I've made and the other one was much bigger and arguably more ambitious. So if you're interested in more ceramic furniture building projects, um, definitely check that out. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. Bye friends. Hello. Hey, big one. You don't like that tripod, do you? You don't like that tripod. <laughs>